Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for being here today. Uh, we are thrilled to present our uh, annual symposium on uh, issues that are urgent uh, for the discussion on interior architecture uh, in the Department of Interior Architecture at Head Geneva. So I'm very happy to welcome you all. Uh, and throughout the next two days, we will be discussing uh, issues related to uh, nocturnal history of architecture and how night has shaped uh, the history of space design in different ways to that that we normally know and have been exposed to uh, in the official historiography of space design and architecture. So uh, I would like, first of all, to thank uh, Roberto Zancan uh, for having uh, planned uh, this list of guests uh, with, with a lot of attention to having a kind of consistent panel of uh, contributors to the discussion and with all the intelligence that he normally provides. Also, Valentina De Luigi, uh, Ines Sali, and Valentin Dubois for having set up the organization of the symposium in uh, the most uh, professional way, as usual. And to the uh, rest of my colleagues of the uh, research project Sense de Nuit, uh, Yuri Krapchenko, Vera Sacchetti, Manon Portera, uh, who are associated to uh, this symposium as a part of an ongoing long-term research on night and architecture. Uh, that we are carrying out uh, together with me, with myself, uh, within the Department of Interior Architecture. Uh, so I would like to provide you a bit of a historic framework uh, of where this topic uh, is coming from and why we are kind of uh, discussing this here today, other than the pertinence and the interest of the topic. So four years ago, in 2018, when I arrived to High Geneva, uh, studio critic and professor Yuri Kapchenko was doing a studio what, that was called uh, Saint de Nuit, uh, Night Scenes. And uh, he was working with the students, uh, taking references from, from painting, literature, cinema, and kind of collaging fragments of what he called Saint de Nuit in a very uh, poetic, but also very uh, scenographic way, uh, according to his own line uh, of work. And very rapidly, we realized while discussing on the topic that most of the references he was normally using uh, did not belong uh, to what we normally understand by uh, architectural discipline. So most of them were coming from other medium and media. Obviously, that belongs also to his particular imaginary. But we were kind of fascinated by the hypothesis that maybe uh, night has been an obliterated paradigm in the construction of architectural discourse throughout history. And that somehow remained uh, in our internal discussion. And then we started looking differently at architectural publications, magazines, journals. Very rapidly, we realized that the mainstream uh, vessels of communication in architectural discourse, like the most prominent uh, architectural magazines, El Croquis, uh, Apartamento, A plus U, uh, et cetera, uh, very rarely published uh, nocturnal photography, for example. And this uh, shocked us. We started reading uh, the articles accompanying this photography. Very rapidly, we realized that also like the, the, the theory associated to these images, the idea of tectonics, etc., was somehow associated to a diurnal way of thinking uh, architecture, uh, maybe even the way of dealing with solidity, materiality, etc. The fact that there, there is a certain independence of natural light uh, in, in discussing issues about the space design. Uh, in a certain way, we realized that maybe the default thinking uh, of architectural design is diurnal, as opposed to a nocturnal way of thinking space design. And this fascinated us. Uh, obviously, this belonged to a long tradition of uh, how architectural discourse, theory, and agency have been shaped throughout the history of space design. Uh, the most prominent treatise from the classic period, from Vitruvius, the Architectura, to uh, the four books of architecture by, by Palladio. Uh, there are very rare references to tonight in the most important treatise on Western uh, architecture. Um, then artificial light was invented in the 19th century, and obviously this changed forever the way space design is done. And uh, in the 20th century, uh, some authors in their writings uh, started to explore how uh, the nocturnal identity of a space uh, was changing the identity of architecture. Uh, and I'm thinking of Ren Kulhas in, uh, when he talked of Coney Island in Delirious New York, but also Rainer Van Han in the architecture of the world temporary environment. But somehow, if you really analyze the most prominent writings also of the 20th century, uh, Complexity and Contradiction, uh, The Architecture of the City by Aldo Rossi, also the writings of Colomina, etc., a lot of them still deal with a certain uh, idea of uh, a diurnal way of thinking in space. Uh, and this is a tremendous pertinent topic for interior architecture because night 
the absence of uh, natural light automatically uh, creates a sort of interiority in the way we think of space. And uh, as of today, uh, we know that recently, over the last few years, some very important exhibitions have been done on the history of nightclubs, for example. Uh, there are also publications very prominent on uh, artificial light. This is not to say that there are not uh, exceptions about exploring and researching uh, nocturnal agendas of space design, but we can assume as an hypothesis of this symposium that a nocturnal history of architecture is yet to be made, and this is what interests uh, us enormously. Uh, a couple of years ago, or three years ago, uh, the CEO of Netflix uh, declared that Netflix is actually competing with sleep. Uh, so the main competitor of Netflix for their commercial activities is sleep. They are not confronting other companies. And this is one of the first time in the history of capitalism that actually uh, a market economy, uh, companies are uh, confronting human behavior as opposed to uh, kind of trying to compete with other companies. So night is an extremely recurrent and pertinent topic to understanding how the world is being shaped uh, today in a dystopian uh, sometimes way. Uh, and obviously this also comes to the very important book by Jonathan Crary, 24-7 uh, uh, Late Capitalism and the Absence of Sleep. So how do we uh, interior architects confront with these realities? Uh, in 2019, uh, together with Yuri Krapchenko and uh, myself, uh, we won a competition for doing an exhibition at Forum des Architectures in Lausanne uh, for curating an exhibition that we called recurrently Saint-Denis. And um, we later associated the Department of Interior Architecture to this exhibition and the students, uh, the bachelor students with Manon Porter as well, uh, did an amazing uh, scenography for a nocturnal exhibition on architecture. We uh, displayed and explored uh, night types of a space, uh, and we did five typologies. We did the nightclub, the restaurant, the corner shop, uh, the city, and the cinema for an exhibition that was open only uh, throughout uh, five nights. It was a tremendous success. It will be later on displayed today as uh, belonging to the series of discussions that we will be having today. And that was really the uh, starting point of uh, this research project that we are currently developing within the Department of Interior Architecture. There was one thing that shocked us, is that uh, we always associated content to parties, so to say. So there were always lectures, debates, presentations, and then there were nocturnal events uh, and parties associated to that. And we were shocked uh, the night we did the uh, event on the nightclub, uh, already for the lectures, to which we invited Octave Perrault from the Cuisine Pavilion, uh, Paul Esteve, who is doing a PhD on uh, Boat de Nuit in Spain. Uh, already that night, there were 200 people waiting for the lectures before the party. So people were kind of uh, thrilled and looking forward, joining the discussions, and not only the party afterwards. So we realized that there was a third thing, a demand, a necessity, an urgency uh, to deal with, with this topic. And uh, later on, I invited uh, the director of El Croquis, Richard Levent, to uh, head Geneva to do a workshop on uh, a nocturnal version of El Croquis. So throughout two weeks, I had Geneva uh, students uh, did uh, night photography uh, with, with Richard. And they did and they edited a um, kind of fancy uh, or uh, non-official version of El Croquis uh, with buildings in Geneva that I will be presenting also later today. <laughs> And um, during these two weeks, uh, Richard Levin uh, kept on telling students all the time, this idea of doing night photography is crazy because I hate it and I really hate it. And, but at the same time, he did the workshop, you know? So the, the invitation was both an invitation and a critique of how, for example, prominent magazines are dealing with the image, with the official imagery of architecture. And I think that the fact that uh, uh, people were at the same time or prominent figures who are shaping uh, architectural publications uh, in the case of uh, Crocus, for example, were criticizing night photography so strongly uh, was a kind of provocation and a motivation to keep on working on this issue. Because when issues polarize people, obviously that means that uh, there is an interest in the topic itself. And finally, uh, in 2020, last year in September, we kicked off uh, this research project officially with funding from the ASHOS uh, with a group of uh, teachers at Geneva who are uh, interested in the topic. So Yuri Krapchenko, uh, myself, uh, Manon Portera, uh, Roberto Zankan, and Vera Sacchetti. And this is how this symposium has been shaped and funded uh, from the um, uh, research project that we call Sense de Nuit and that we will be presenting uh, later today. But uh, all this to say that um, there are a lot of activities uh, being 
developed around this topic uh, that take the form of exhibitions, publications, essays, workshops. Some of you, the students this year, have already worked uh, during the opening week in workshops that we will be also discussing today. And all this creates a sort of uh, epistemological uh, podium and circle uh, that contributes a bit of knowledge uh, to this issue that will be later on also published with Spector Books in 2022 uh, in a very <coughs> special book that we will call Nocturnal History of Architecture. So please be all welcome. And now I uh, leave the floor to Roberto Zanka, who will be presenting the panelists and contributors to this discussion. Thank you very much.